If God is first in your life, everything can come in order. If God is not first in your life, nothing can come in order. And when I say everything comes in order, I don't mean we're not gonna have problems or tribulations world. Jesus said you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. I don't mean you won't ever have any problems because we live in a fallen world. But what I do mean is that everything in your life can come into order and you can walk through whatever situation you go through because God is in charge and in control in your life because you've put him first in your life. But here's another thing God can never do. He can never be second. He can never be second. He's first of all, he's above all, he's higher than all, he's first. Every morning you wake up, the Lord Jesus Christ who is your savior is with you all day long. How often during the day do you call upon him? Do you rely upon him? Do you talk to him? Do you confess to him? Do you seek direction or you just go your way? Time with him, it simply means this, that at time, whatever that time is for you in your life, you spend with him to do what? To get a sense of direction, to prepare you for what the day holds. Only God knows what any day holds for any of us because God knows what's around the corner. He knows what's going to happen. We as preachers sometimes will say, put God first in your life. And that's a good analogy to help us understand. But let me just let you know, if God's not first in your life, he's still first in the universe. You didn't rearrange the order of the cosmos at all, okay? God's still first. So God can never be second. Here's what I'm talking about. Who's first in your life? Who's really first? I'm asking you where your heart is. I'm telling you about a principle in scripture that God says, will you put me first? In every area of your life, will you put me first? Satan will do anything and everything in his power to get you busy, to distract you, anything to keep you off your knees, keep you out of the word of God, keep you from meditating upon scripture, keep you from absorbing the Word of God, keeping you from feeding on the Word of God because he knows how important it is. And so, why was Jesus up early? As the Bible reminds us in several places, up early before day, because Jesus, the Son of God, knew that he needed that time to be alone with his heavenly Father to listen to the Father. All of us, none of us are in such a situation that we are so complete within ourselves that we don't need God's direction. All of us need to take time to listen to God. That the most important thing in your life as a follower of Jesus is your time that you spend alone with Him with nobody but Him. And so Listen, it was, it was a priority in the life of Jesus. It was a priority in the life of the Apostle Paul because it's the time when you and God personally are hearing each other. God is hearing you. You're hearing God. You're listening to God. God is listening to you. It's that private, intimate, personal time that you spend with Him. It's when there are no interruptions in your relationship with Him most important part of your life, no matter what. When you have a private time with just you and God, let me tell you something, that can save your life. It can save your finances. It can save your marriage. It can save your relationships. It can save your children. It can save every aspect of your life. Because it's that time when you and God, that just the two of you are dealing with something in your life that God is going to give you the right answer. You may hear lots of things, but if you will stay with him, he will show you exactly what to do in any and every situation. God's not going to mislead you. Watch this carefully. If he loves you enough to give his son to die on the cross for you, he's certainly not going to mislead you in some decision you have to make. You say, well, I'm a nobody. No, you're not. You're a somebody. You're a somebody whom Jesus has saved. You're a somebody that God has kept you to this point in your life. 
You're somebody that God has a plan for your life. You're somebody that, for whom God has a future and for whom God loves enough to take time to listen to you, speak to you, guide you, help you, guard you. That's who he is. That's what, that's what this is all about. Now think about this. Every single day of our life, we are absolutely subject to the power of God. We have the privilege of having a relationship with Him. We have the power within us and the Holy Spirit to do the right thing every time if we will choose to do it. He is working in our behalf continually. 